Welcome to our channel, Fast Cabling. So have you ever experienced the frustration of setting up a PoE extender for your PoE wireless SS point only to find that it doesn't work as expected? And if you face this issue, you're not alone. Then in this video, we'll dive into one of the most common reasons why PoE extenders fail to function properly, the non-standard PoE and compatibility issues. So PoE extenders play a crucial role in extending the power and data reach of power over Ethernet networks. These devices enhance the range of PoE-enabled devices, allowing for flexibility and scalability network expansion. PoE extenders function by amplifying the signals, overcoming limitation in both distance and power delivery associated with the standard PoE setup. And their purpose is to bridge the gap between the power source and the power of the device, ensuring a consistent and reliable power and data supply. And on the other hand, PoE wireless SS point are integral components of modern network setup, providing wireless connectivity to devices within a designated area. This means that the wireless SS point can receive both power and data through a single Ethernet cable, and simplifying installation and reducing cable clutter. This PoE wireless SS point are essential for creating a robust and efficient efficient wireless network, extending connectivity seamlessly across indoor and outdoor spaces. So PoE extenders and PoE wireless SS point form a critical duo in extending network capabilities, but several factors can lead to issues when they fail to work together seamlessly. One of the common reasons is wiring and connection issues. So ensure that your connections are secure and the cables are properly terminated. Faulty or loose connection can disrupt the power and data flow between the extender and the wireless access point. PoE extenders are designed to amplify power signal, but if the power supply is insufficient, it can lead to underperformance or failure. PoE standards vary and compatibility is paramount. So you have to ensure that the PoE extender and the wireless access point are the same standard to guarantee the connection. And PoE standards define the rules and specifications for delivering both power and data over Ethernet cables. IEEE AO 2.3 AF, also known as PoE, provide up to 15.4 watts of power, which is suitable for devices like IP cameras and basic network devices. And IEEE AO 2.3 AT, commonly referred to as PoE+, increases the power delivery capacity to 30 watts, supporting more power-hungry devices like high-performance cameras and wireless access point. And IEEE AO 2.3 BT standard known as PoE++ can deliver even up to 90 watts of power for high power devices. So standardization allows different manufacturers to produce devices that work seamlessly together, promoting a universal language for power and data delivery over Ethernet. And non-standard PoE devices, those not adhering to established IEEE standard like AO 2.3 AF or AT, can introduce compatibility challenges. These issues often arise due to variation in voltage, pin configuration, and power levels. And unlike standard PoE, which follows defined specification, non-standard PoE devices might deviate in these crucial parameters leading to mismatches and other operational problems. And one effective solution, and unlike standard PoE, which follows defined specification, non-standard PoE devices might deviate in these crucial parameters.
nanometers, leading to mismatches or potential interoperability problems. And one effective solution to address compatibility issues between PoE extenders and PoE wireless access point is to employ a compatible PoE injector. So this one we have the 30 watts 802.3 AT PoE Plus injector. It can add the power to the Ethernet cable and transmit PoE with up to 30 watts of power and 10G bandwidth to IP devices. So behind me is the setup for today. We are going to connect to a TP-Link wireless SS point and extend the reach for 200 meters in total. And the PoE extender is already placed in between. First, we're going to try to use the TP-Link injector. We are going to plug in the Ethernet cable here to the LAN port and to our router. Next, I'm going to use the 100 meters Ethernet cable to plug it into the PoE output port. So coming over here, let's look at our PoE extender. However, the indicated lights are not on. So why is it not working? Let's coming over here and look at the back. This is actually a passive PoE. A passive PoE can deliver 24 volt, but a standard PoE is actually 48 volt. So that's why it's not compatible with our PoE extender to extend the range. Next, I'm going to use our 30 watts PoE plus injector. Going to plug it into the output port and also the data from our router to the input port. So it's already plugged in. Let's come over and check out our PoE extender. As you can see, the indicated lights are on already. So everything is already plugged in. And you can see the wireless access point is working as well. So throughout this video, we delved into the intricacies of PoE extenders and their integration with PoE wireless access point. We explored the common reasons for compatibility issues, the importance of PoE standards and the practical solution to address challenges in connection. And if you found this video informative and helpful, Please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, Fast Cabling, for more insightful content. And we value your input, so feel free to leave comments or questions below. Your engagement fills our, commi our commitment to delivering valuable tech-related discussion. And thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more updates.